Are you listening? Damn. Another episode of Trash Talk. I'm TJ O'Connor. With me, as always, Damian the Wolverine Hill. And we're joined by one half of the 205-pound amateur title fight going down this Saturday for Three River Throwdown 17 in Alaska, Wisconsin, Thomas Herrera. But before we get into the interview, we have to go over the sponsors of the show, Valhalla Combat Sports Incorporated, Ink Shrinks Tattoo, the Striking Institute, James Clark, Sports Psychology and Hypnosis Therapy, The Fighters, and my mom. Thomas, thanks for taking the time to join us Fight Week. How are you doing, sir? I am feeling fantastic. I'm ready to go. I love it. This is my favorite time of the week or, you know, towards the end, the weight cut is just about done. Weigh-ins are tomorrow, face-offs, then it's fight night. I love it. Oh, yeah. I mean, you you seem pretty fresh. You, you look good. Your cheeks aren't all sucked in. Um, are you going to have to do a little bit of a, of a water cut at all, or are you uh, kind of right on weight? Cause I, I'm about three pounds over. I like to use the last, the fight week itself to kind of do like a, a longer cut, like a, sh- a shorter, or I, I should say like one day at a time type deal. I don't like to do a big weight cut like a day before uh, weigh-ins or like the morning of weigh-ins, just because most of the time I'm going to be driving myself to weigh-ins and I have a four hour drive. So I like to float around three pounds over the day before, and then just basically breathe everything off in the <laughs> next 24 hours. And, and, you know, I feel great too. It's, I usually don't fight at 205. I usually fight at 185 and that cut is a hell of a lot worse. So I feel great. Oh, yeah. That was so well said. And you answered two of my questions and transitioned me perfectly. So I appreciate that. One of the things I was going to mention is most of your fights, you know, before your layoff there were at 185. So if that made a decision, come to 205. And just the way you were spoken, that's spoken like a guy who's going into his 18th career fight. I mean, I feel like, I feel like you've done this once or twice. You know, I've been in the game for 10 years. I, I remember when I started fighting, uh, Damian Hill was the, you were the big guy. You know, you, you were the, the guy that everybody wanted to see. And, and I wanted to go watch you fight too. So um, it's it's pretty crazy that the world is so small in mixed martial arts. You know, I started fighting a long time ago, and uh, it's this isn't anything new to me. The whole weight cutting process, face off, selling tickets, getting sponsors. It's it's very I, I'm used to it, and I love it. I love the whole process from beginning to end. You know, when I get the message from the promoter telling me, "Hey, what about this guy? Or what about this guy?" and then they send me a contract, and then I get to the gym, and then that's all I think about for the next four months. It's it's uh it's it's awesome um but i actually would like to get back to get back down to 185 eventually yeah yeah no man well one of the things that i've always respected about you i mean even early on in your career is that you've always known how to market yourself you know you've always been your own best publicist you know uh Was that something that you kind of thought about when you had to, uh, when you first started about fighting was knowing about the self-promotion and, uh, I mean, you present yourself like a professional, even as an amateur. So, I mean, (laughs) yeah, uh, well, um, I'm a nurse by profession. I went to school to be a nurse and that's what I do, but I always make the joke that I should have been in, uh, business and marketing or sales just because, I, I feel like I have a way to connect with people to make a good sale, to, to get a sponsor, to get a big sponsorship too. And a mid-level professional fighter as an amateur still. And, you know, I'm not trying to brag. My grandmother-in-law, who I'm now taking care of at my job, who just got admitted to my facility, she said, you know, you just got to be honest. You're not, I'm not bragging about myself. I'm just being honest. I'm being truthful. It's, uh, it's, I feel like I've always had the ability to connect with people from all different personalities. And I definitely use that to my advantage and it helps everything a lot, a lot more. I, I don't have to rely on my coaches. I don't have to rely on managers. I don't have to hire a manager to make the sale or to get a sponsor for me because I know how to do it all on my own. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I I don't even have a follow up question. I'm just going to let everybody know that's listening. All the other amateur fighters and even the professionals take notes. 
<laughs> he knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, you, you just got to be a people person, honestly. Like, a lot of people get the bad impression from really big name fighters, you know, who are very, very talkative and very into themselves. But you just you just got to be a people person and get along with a bunch of variety of personalities, too. And got to know how to talk to people. You got to read a book and, and know how to talk to different types of people. So that's how it is. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And getting that chance to, you know, understanding people, getting how people react. That's something that, you know, as weird as it sounds, because you're talking about fist fighting the guy, that transitions directly into fighting understanding your opponent, finding tendencies, things like that. Taking the time that you've had off, I mean, most of it obviously was the forced COVID layoff, but there was a time there from 2017 here. Getting back into it now, what has been the biggest growth that you feel that you've made in your game? The biggest growth that I feel like I've made in my fight game would probably be my stand-up. Um, you know, I started out as a wrestler, I don't, I don't think it's any secret right now just because, you know, just about every single one of my fights are somewhere in the internet and uh, everybody would see and know right away that I'm a wrestler and I do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I have a blue belt. I've been a blue belt for a while. I got my blue belt out of Mario Berto's Jiu-Jitsu Academy in Rochester. Um, but I would say my biggest growth over the last few years would definitely be my hands and my, my kicking, my knees and my elbows. You know, I'm still an amateur, but you know, I'm going to be a professional one of these days. And uh, I know, you know, I got my elbows ready. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to see you back. And uh, honestly, you've, you've always been fighting at the highest level. Uh, I don't, I don't know exactly how many title fights you've actually had, but knowing that this is another title fight, you don't have as much of a cut. Um, if this fight was to go the distance, uh, how do you feel about your cardio going into this fight? And then I, I guess, how do you see the fight playing out uh, where you get your hand raised? You know, cardio for me has never been a problem. Um, as a matter of fact, I do, I do five K's and I do 10 K's and I do half marathons for fun. I don't even, I don't just do them for fun. I go into these five K's and 10 K's and half marathons with the intentions of winning it too. And I win them. I, I beat actual runners who run for a living, or actual cross country runners. And cardio has never been a problem for me, especially now. And it will never be a problem for me in the future. Um, I've been the distance in championship fights. I've won split decision championship fights. So I've been all five rounds. I've, I've finished championship fights in the first round. I finished championship fights in the second round. I finished them due to strikes. I finished them due to do submission. I finished them by decision, unanimous decision, split decision. You know, I, this, this is, it's not new to me. And uh, the fight can go in the first round. The fight can go in the second round. The fight can go the distance. I'll be ready for anything. You know, that's just what being a champion is all about. You got to be ready for any scenario. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and using that, we could talk about how many fights you've had in your experience. How much factor do you think that does play going into this fight with Dylan, who... He's only had four fights now. I mean, he's looked very impressive in those fights, but it's only four fights now. When you're, like I mentioned earlier, you're going into your 18th career fight. How much do you think that experience is going to play, knowing that you've seen guys that look similar in the past? I think my experience is probably going to be my best feature going into this fight. You know, Dylan, he's a stud. He's 30 years old. He's finished all four of his opponents in the first round. His last win was against a guy who was 5-0. and He got him with a submission. Uh, not only that, he was a college wrestler and wrestled in high school. He was a pretty good wrestler, too, back in the day. Um, but at the end of the day, it's the experience. Experience is going to flourish in these championship fights, especially when it's for a nice title. Um, I'm sure he's going to bring it. He's going to bring his A game, just like I'm going to bring my A game. And I, I don't expect him to take it easy. Um, I want to fight the best fighters out there. And I was happy that they offered me this fight because he is ranked higher than I am in the rankings. You know, those rankings are subjective a little bit, but uh, um, I, I love it. I want to fight the best and he's the best. He's better than me right now, according to paper. So let's do it. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I don't even have a question. That was, br that was brilliant. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's well said and going into this, how, let's just go back a little bit, we're kind of backtracking, but how did the origins of this fight play out? When did you get the call about this fight 
And what has, without giving away the game plan, like that, what has training been like leading up to this fight, you know, just a couple of days out from fighting? Um, well, I would, I guess when I'd announced my return to the fight game, I focused strictly on just my hands, just my boxing. Um, I did just four months straight of boxing with a little bit of uh, mixed martial arts and ground game in between there, just because I know when I become a professional, I'm going to be fighting guys who are supposed to be professional level athletes in the mixed martial arts world. Uh, so I don't want to go in there and just be a wrestler or just do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or just a combination of both. I want to be able to use my hands too. And now I feel confident with my hands. So um, as soon as I got the call, uh, finding out who I was going to fight, um, I took my stand up, my wrestling, and my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and I found a gym to put it all together. And right now I've been training for the last few months at Start BJJ in uh, St. Cloud, Minnesota. I train with Brock Larson, I train with all those studs. Uh, not only that, I still am critiquing and sharpening my skills as a wrestler. I train at Wrestle Jitsu with the American wrestling icon, Jake Clark. Um, you know, it's the grind is in my DNA. I will not stop and I will continue to get better at what I'm already good at and I'll continue to get better at what I'm not good at. And, uh, and I love every aspect of it too. So, um, leading up to the fight, um, I'm just, I'm ready to go. It, I'll go. I'll, I'm ready to go right now. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, his energy. I can feel it through the camera. I mean, just knowing that we're a couple days out, I can't wait to be there to see the fight. And obviously this is you know, an interview about the fight, but I would be remiss if we didn't have a chance to at least talk about what you've been doing outside the cage as well, um, raising these funds. Can, can you just enlighten the fans about that and let them know how they can help you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel like in the last 10 years, I've always done some type of fundraising or some type of advocating for some nonprofit organization or some foundation. Um, this time around, I've decided to return to the fight game specifically to raise money and awareness for veteran suicide rates. Um, I've been in the military for almost 10 years or not right now. I spent the majority of my career as an 11 Bravo, which is infantry. Uh, they have an old saying, why is the sky blue? Uh, the sky is blue because God loves the infantry and it represents blue represents the blue cord that all infantrymen get. But anyways, um, not too long ago, I went on to deployment and uh, one of my battle buddies who came back from that deployment with us is no longer here because of suicide. And it's unfortunate. It's 22 is a number that represents the veteran suicide rates a day. So um, I kind of started this campaign called Fight for 22. I'm sure that exists somewhere else, but for me, I feel like it's mine just because of how strongly it relates to my life. So what I'm trying to do is I'm fighting in a cage to honor my brothers and sisters who have died by suicide and also to honor them and to raise awareness and funds for nonprofit organizations that help veterans that are in crisis. So that's, that's my biggest focus right now. Um, another focus for me is a foundation called tap cancer out, um, which I actually just became an ambassador for. So tap cancer out is a nonprofit organization that collects funds raised by people who, uh, practice Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and um, they take it and dish it out to additional or other nonprofit organizations that help cancer patients. And um, I, I don't know a person who doesn't know another person who has been affected by cancer. Everybody knows somebody at this point. And my mother, and my father have both um, had cancer and they're cancer survivors, you know, thank God. And um, I just remember back in high school and, and back uh, when I was a kid, just watching my mother struggle. And uh, I love my mom. You know, I, 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 uh, I'm not afraid to say that I'm kind of a mama's boy, but uh, that what, what guy, if I look, yeah, so I'm, I'm just kind of getting caught up. But uh, yeah, I, I feel emotionally drawn and connected to fighting for these causes and having all that energy pushing me forward when I step into that cage. And it, I feel like it gives me the edge too. So yeah, those are the, those are the two big focuses. Man, it was, that was powerful stuff. Like I feel everything that you said, man. I mean, and to, it's one of those things like it, it, you are a prime example of uh, 
not every fighter being a bad guy or being evil or having bad intentions and stuff. You are a great ambassador for the sport. And man, I, I liked uh, this is saying uh, my mom always used to say is uh, why we shouldn't be bad and all this other stuff is like, you're not just representing uh, yourself. You represent how I raised you and man, your parents did a great job, man. It It's because of watching my mother, who was a single mother of, of uh, five kids grind every single day and, and struggle to make ends meet that has helped me be who I am today, you know, grinding and grinding. And, you know, I, I work as a nurse. Some days I work 16 hours straight. Sometimes I work a day shift and a PM shift and I work overnights. And sometimes even after that, I'm still tired, but it doesn't matter how tired I get. I'm still going to go to the gym and bust my ass because I have a belt to win. And uh, it's, it's my mentality that gives me the competitive edge over everybody. It doesn't matter what fighter I'm going against. It doesn't matter what runner I'm going to run against at a 5K or 10K or what guy I'm going to go against at a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu match. I'm going to go out there and I know my mentality is is my edge. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that was perfect. Uh, perfect segue in back into the fight, actually, because when you are inside that cage and when you uh, potentially get your hand raised at the end of that and you get that belt wrapped around your waist, how can people actually reach out and donate uh, money and uh, uh, reach into those funds. And uh, and what would showing up do for you uh, uh, to all these people that want to help the cause? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm continuously posting a link on my Facebook page of the recent fundraiser that I've been tr participating in. Uh, the next fundraiser for Tap Cancer Out I'm participating in is actually going to take place on October 24th. It's a tournament fundraiser. And I continuously post links and people can go to that link and donate as much as they want. They can donate five bucks. They can donate $500. Anything helps. And the great thing about it is that I don't touch a single penny and I don't want to touch a penny. I want all that money to go directly to the beneficiaries. So if you just go to my Facebook page, go to that link, it can be in honor of, you know, whoever may be affected by cancer in your life. Um, that, and also if you attend the fight, if you go to www.nitrotickets.com, go to Three River Throwdown, the event, and then select me as a fighter, I earn a commission on those sales. And I've I've donated every single dollar that I've ever made in the since I've started fighting. I'm pretty sure, you know, I've been fighting for 10 years and I can't really remember how much damn money I made. But you know, all the money that I've been making has been going to something that isn't about me. And that's what this is. So you you buy a ticket, I get 20% or so, and all of that money will then go into that account. And uh, it's it's a guarantee. I That's how you can support those causes, and I would definitely appreciate it also. So, yeah. I love it. When, when I seen, you know, what you were doing, I wanted to make sure to bring that up. I mean, it's such a selfless cause and such a selfish sport. We talk about all the time, fighting is a selfish sport. And what you're doing, I mean, I, I seriously, I tip my hat to you if I had one on. But... Um, but um, Seriously though, Thomas, I mean, I feel like you've sold them enough on why they need to be there. I'm talking to you now, fans. Whether you're going to watch someone else or not, select Thomas as your fighter on Nitro tickets. Donate to this cause. It's a, it's a big deal. And before we do wrap it up, Thomas, I do want to give you a platform. Um, we always want to give that shout out to thank any teammates, sponsors, anybody outside the gym that's been there for you leading up to this big fight. And that's going to, you know, you want to thank before you get your title on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. Well, First, I just want to thank my wife. Um, last year, before I decided to get back in the fight game, her and I, we had a conversation, and I, I looked at her and I said, I don't want to grow old, and I don't want to ask myself, you know, what if uh, what if I would have fought again? You know, what if I, I would have had that opportunity to raise more money using my hands? And um, she and I came to an agreement that it was okay for me to fight again. And because of our agreement, I've been able to raise nearly $30,000. And had she said no that I couldn't fight, I would have honored that as a good husband. I would have, I would have said, you know, you're, I appreciate your honesty, and you know, we're, we're one couple, so I would have honored that. So I, I just wanted to thank my wife for one. Um, I want to thank my coworkers who switch shifts around with me so I can go train, so I can go to St. Cloud and train all day. Um, I want to thank all of those at Wrestle Jitsu in uh, Waite Park, which is next to St. Cloud. Jake Clark and everybody who's been extremely supportive of my foundations and my focuses, 
and also have been kicking my ass at the gym. Uh, I want to thank Start BJJ, Brock Larson, Angel, um, who will be my corners and have been my coaches for a few months now. All of the studs that I train with for the team competition practices and stuff like that. Um, there's a bunch of sponsors, but uh, after Wayne's, I'm going to come out with another video just thanking all the individual sponsors too, just because there's a lot of people to thank and it takes a village to raise a fighter and I appreciate every single one of you. I really do. Um, so yeah, that's it. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, it, it does take a village and I'm glad that you have a great one around you. Uh, again, September 11th, this Saturday night on Alaska, Wisconsin, on Alaska Omni Center, Thomas Herrera is going for the 205 pound light heavyweight title against Dylan Klugas. Be there or be square. Like this video, subscribe to Trash Talk with Damien and TJ, and most importantly, rule number one, capitalize it bold letters do not be a hoe i love it awesome thank you guys i appreciate it Stop.